Well, this is turned into a real project. Oh boy. <laughs> that was dumb. That, that was dumb. Every tool is a hammer, unless it's a screwdriver, then it's a chisel. <laughs> Need a torch. Hate that nut. We're not doing that. Because <laughs> it ain't built till it's overbuilt. Don't force it. Get a bigger hammer. Every day is a school day. All right, it's time to get serious about this thing. Uh, I gotta get it in the shop. It's just too cold to work outside. I gotta get this tin roof uh, contraption torn off first. And then uh, once that's off, I think it'll fit in the garage door, I think. And uh, we'll get it in there. Well, look at, I'll tell you what we're gonna do once we get it inside. Inside. Now what? Come on, I'll show you. <laughs> All right, if you're just joining us, this is my wife's beautiful new vintage camper, as she calls it. I got other names for it, but uh, <laughs> you may want to go back and watch the last couple videos to get caught up. But when last you saw, I was working inside, cleaning out all the rodent infestation and tearing out some stuff that was just rotten and nasty. Uh, I didn't really get into gutting the inside. I found a fair bit of water damage right in this area under this. Uh, there's a spot where you can tell that the roof is a little jacked up here. Uh, and this whole area right here is rotten inside. So looking at the rest of the camper, and actually in the earlier in the video where I was taking that tin off the roof, the roof all felt pretty good except for right here. I could tell, you know, when you're walking around it on your knees, you can tell if it's firm or not. The wall on that side of the camper and the back of the camper all look good from the inside. Uh, this front lower section from the inside seems a little soft. I don't know if it's just the paneling or if it's the framing. When you have one of these old campers that has issues, has, has been leaking and has rot, 
Uh, the right thing to do is to pull the tin, the skins off the outside. Uh, because the way they build these campers is they, they build the steel frame, they put the deck on, they put the wooden walls up with the paneling on them on the inside, and then they they frame all the cabinets and things, and that's kind of what holds it together. The very last thing they do is to put on the skins and the, the you know the skins on the side and on the top. So to fix it, you really should go about that the opposite, which would be to pull the skins off first. It's kind of it's a daunting thing to do, um, but I think. I feel pretty good about most of the rest of the camper. I know that I have roof issues anyways, and I don't want to just slather tar on it. It just, it isn't fixed. So I know that I have to, at the very least, pull this trim off all the way around. Um, and I've got to fix some structure in here. And I want to look at the structure under here. So what I'm going to do is, since I have... All sorts of window issues I got to deal with. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to pull off these windows in the front. I'm going to pull off this door. Uh, another thing that I think is lucky in my case is that we're planning on cutting in the serving window right here and doing away with this door because we have a back door we can use in the other corner. So is this door is coming out. At that point, once I do that in the window and I, and I take that trim off, which I have to do anyways, there's not much left holding the tins on. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the tins at least halfway down this side to get past this rot, you know? And if I and if I keep pulling tins and keep finding rot, I'm just gonna keep going. And then same thing in the front, I'm gonna start at the bottom. I'm gonna pull, well, I'll pull this bottom piece off, see how it looks. If I get, you know, if I got rot, if it's all good, that's great. I'll just put it back on with and freshen up these windows. If I have rot, I'll just keep pulling tin until I get to where there's no rot, repair it, put the tin back on. I'm not sure yet what we're gonna do inside of this camper as far as, I know we're gonna pull out these, if you look at the last video, you can see what I've already torn out, but I know we'll pull out these benches. I wanna leave these walls. There's a wall here, a short wall in a wall there, I may shorten that one back a little, but that's what gives these campers a lot of their structure, strength, is, is to have walls and cabinets even in them. So I believe these cabinets need to go. But when, uh, when we frame in this serving window, um, you know, the serving window, let me see. You can see, you can kind of see the, where I just took my finger and drew an outline of the serving window. What we're thinking is we're gonna have like a, a glass front display case on the bottom and then on the top of that will be the flat surface where you serve from. And we'll cover all that with a door that just opens up and props up so that when you walk up to the window, you're in the shade or whatever underneath that door. So on, the reason I tell you this is because on either side of this serving window, I am gonna frame, I'm gonna have a, a, a plywood wall, at least going into the camper, you know, 18 inches or so on, on both sides, much like the original walls over there are. And that's gonna strengthen the side of this camper a lot. We are also gonna build some new cabinetry, which we, which we need, we need a sink, we need some other things. So all that stuff, I'm gonna make sure I build it in a way that's structural, that's holding the walls of this thing together and square and all that stuff. So I think the things we're gonna to do to turn it into a food truck are gonna make it more sturdy. We gotta to, got to deal with this rot because we need to be able to attach the metal back to it and have it be waterproof, obviously. So there's really no sense putting it off any longer. It's time to just Start tearing this thing apart, see what we find. You know, if it's a total disaster, we're just gonna have to forget about it. You know, maybe somebody that restores campers wants to buy it, or maybe we just shove it over a bank somewhere. I don't know, uh, but we're not gonna know until we start taking stuff apart. So I guess that's 
where I'm at, I gotta just stop dilly dallying and get to it. Where this big uh, chunk of camper come from? Uh, I'm assuming. I'm up just ignoring that, there? pretending it's not there, hoping that makes it go away. Oh shoot! It's like the gas light in your car. Does it work the same? Sure. Okay. How's that going over there? Uh, I got this. <laughs> oh. Big twisty. Thing it's not supposed to be. Yeah. Looks Pretzel like... shape. So that's probably no good. <laughs> right, probably garbage. Yeah. That's too bad. Other than that, it's not going very great. Looks great, right? Huh. Look, at it, it's not as scary as I thought it was gonna be, honestly. So that's it for tonight. I'm hungry, it's time for supper. Tomorrow, we peel off from the front down here all the way up over at least to this area somewhere so I can see what I'm working with. I don't know, that's all new to me. We'll find out, stay tuned.
<laughs> there's the camper in just its underwear. <laughs> Look it. It looks really scary. I know. But honestly, when you really look it over, and I think about the exact purpose of what I'm doing, making a food cart, not a camper, uh, this kind of makes sense. Follow along. So, so all this has to come apart. It's exactly where we wanted the window. And as luck would have it, it's exactly where the rot is in the wall. So so these two joists would come out anyways. We'll put, we'll widen it out, put some bigger ones and, and frame in an opening, almost like real construction. Uh, and that's going to eliminate the rot in the wall. All that'll be left is <clears throat> this top plate. It's actually a double. There's a top plate that's part of the wall structure, and there's a top plate on top of the top that's part of the roof structure, both of which are, are rotten in through here where this leak was, right? So what I think I'll do is I'll pull this from, from this aluminum plate to the one at the back. We'll pull both of those top boards off. In the meantime, we'll, we'll figure this opening exactly where it's going to be, and, and we'll frame that. And then we'll just put a new top plate on when we're done. And then we'll do the same thing up above. Up here you can see the roof structure, just just like the wall back here, is, is really in good shape. There's no rot anywhere. I mean, it's dirty and gross looking, but it's in good condition. Um, the roof is the same. I'll tell you, when I was crawling... Oh, see that mouse over there? Little booger. Come here, little mousy. I hate them. I hate rodents. Okay. Uh, so up here, yeah, the roof, there's, there's really no rot, except right here on these ends where these tie into this outside, I don't know, rim joist. I don't know what you call that when it's made out of one by one, but right or wrong, all I'm going to do is sister a new board alongside of these screw it to them good the whole length maybe even glue i don't know whatever and uh same thing back there there's a couple more there's like two spots that were worse one was right over the door here and then it's a little less worse but still bad and then back there there's another spot where the upper one is totally missing so any of these that have issues basically gonna just scab one on the side of it even though i don't like that word because it sounds like it's pretty cobby in this case i really don't think it's too bad um i may end up scabbing one i may end up scabbing on one for every single joist here and, and and really if i have to that's not a lot of work the reason i say it is because some of them are sagging even though they don't appear to be rotten at all they they have kind of a droop to them but it didn't collapse it didn't break they're not splintered or anything they just have a little bow to them i think i could pretty easily push it Push them, take a jack inside or just a, you know, a board and wedge it. Get them jacked up a little bit above where they're supposed to be and sister a new board alongside and everything will be fine. Waiting for that mouse over there to move. I just saw him pick his head up. There he is. See his ears? Right over there. Way over on the far side. Okay, all right, I, I gotta stop looking at them. They're like coyotes, they make me just wanna slay them all. Uh, one thing I noticed, which of course I didn't know because I don't know anything about old campers, they had run these two furring strips lengthways and that must have been just to give the roof the slightest little crown in the center so it would shed water because that tin was only touching out here on the edge where it was nailed and then had that ceiling strip put over it. And it was touching the center, but not fastened at all. It was just laying there. But that kind of gives it a little uplift. So like I said earlier, this this is quite scary looking, right? I mean, but but if you break it down into the actual work that needs to be done, this is not a lot more work than what I was gonna do anyways. And doing it this way, I don't have to fully gut the interior. It gives me the opportunity to change the wiring any way I want to. 
I'm not going to strip that wall over there. There's nothing up here that scares me enough to make me want to strip that wall on the other side. So I am limited a little. I can't rewire that wall. But uh, the roof and this side, I can rewire any way I need to. And I can re-insulate. And when I'm all done, maybe I'm oversimplifying. But I, I think it's going to be literally roll that roof tin back out. Tack the edges down. I got to get new corners because those came off so hard they're completely destroyed but you can buy that stuff so i'll retape it put the corners down i'm probably gonna i don't like to tar the roof it's not really the right way to seal up a roof but this one being in the shape the, oh, there's another one this one being in the shape that it's in uh i'm gonna have to tar it because they had screws and nails through the tin to hold that other roof thing on and it's kind of a wreck so gonna have to be tarred up pretty good when all said and done but then it's put this side back on cut cut the tin out for the new opening and the, the hardest part is going to be in my opinion the hardest part is going to be piecing the tin back together from you know above and below the door for example there won't be tin there because there was a door there uh making that look good i'm not exactly sure how i'll do that but i think that's gonna be like one of the hardest parts of it and that doesn't seem too bad i think even though this is real scary looking it's not it's not that bad I'm trying to talk myself into this okay <laughs> In case you couldn't tell, it's going to be fine. There's nothing to worry about. It's fine. It's going to be fine. Oh, boy. All right. While my wife is up at the house scrubbing window frames and polishing, I'm going to be down here trying to make a solid plan of exactly what I'm going to do on this thing next. But that'll be for the next video. I want to thank you for watching. Make sure you have clicked subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up. Click the bell. Just click a bunch of stuff. It's all very helpful to the channel. I appreciate your time. God bless you. God bless the United States of America.